So in this video, we're going to talk about some Theta gang strategies. And of course, we're not talking about Kappa Alpha Theta and their girl gang at Coachella. We're talking about the real Theta gang, the dankest gang on Wall Street bets led by none other than the legendary Momar 11. I've covered Momar and his genius strategy in another video. You can see it here in the picture in picture. So if you're interested in Theta Gang, definitely check that video out. If you're interested in becoming a Theta Gang soldier, keep in mind that it has its own little nascent HQ over at ThetaGang.com. The website is operated by a guy named Juni, and you can see here by the trades that he is a very transparent trader. He's showing you all his wins and losses. He even has a podcast set up. Right now it has nine different episodes, and you can hear his goal in his own words. Here's a little sample. I wanted to make this podcast so you can tune in on your commute and incorporate some of these musings into your strategy. Juni's podcasts actually are pretty good, so if you're interested in getting off the Bear Gang, Bull Gang roller coaster, definitely check him out and the Theta Gang strategies he describes. Last thing I'll say before we actually get into the strategies is this. If you follow Theta Gang, one of the first things you'll notice is that they actually make money consistently. And as evidence of that, what I'm showing you here is a clip from my own spreadsheet where I made about seven grand in six weeks. All of that was achieved with Theta Gang strategies. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and actually start talking about the strategies. So there are two basic Theta Gang strategies, and those are the covered call and the cash covered put. We're gonna dive pretty deep into the covered call in this video, and we'll do the cash covered put in the next video. What the covered call and the cash covered put have in common is that they are focused on selling premium as opposed to buying it. If you recall in the previous videos, that if you're using a bullish strategy, like buying calls, or a bearish strategy, like buying puts, you have to actually spend money on those contracts. That money that you're spending on the contracts is going into the hands of the people who sell those contracts. In other words, that money is going to Theta Gang. So think about all the times that you've spent a lot of money on FDs or somebody on Wall Street Bets spent a ton of money YOLOing and all their money disappeared. Theta Gang is the one that's picking up all that money. So let's crack open the covered call strategy and take a look at how we can make money selling premium to a bunch of YOLOers. If you're a regular user of Wall Street Bets, you probably know what it looks like when you buy call options. You're paying somebody a certain amount of money called the premium in exchange for the option, which is why we call them options, to purchase the underlying security at the strike price on or before the expiration date. For example, here's the September 18th, 2019 SPY chain. You can see it's trading just over 301. And if we wanted the option to purchase shares on September 20th for $304, we actually got to pay somebody $21 per contract. You're looking at paying somebody 20 bucks to sell you shares of stock for $3 more than it's worth. It shouldn't be any surprise why most options expire worthless. In Theta Gang, we play the opposite side of that hustle. So think of selling call options like this. When you sell stock options, you are accepting the obligation to sell shares of stock at the strike price to the option buyer at any point on or before the expiration. For accepting that obligation, you are paid a premium by the option buyer. So here we're looking at Triple Q, which is an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. We want to sell calls. Make sure you're clicking on the correct thing. Nobody wants to hear your excuses if you screw it up. Right now it's trading just under 193. And we can see right off the bat that if we're willing to sell this thing on Friday for 193, somebody will actually pay us 93 bucks in cash right now. And if we accept an obligation to sell it at 195, which is pretty much its all time high, then we can get paid $26. By rolling our obligation out to September 27th, we can see that if we're willing to accept longer term obligations to sell, then the premiums get higher. Somebody will pay us $50 if we agree to sell them Triple Q at 196, which is above all time highs. And here you can see that there is an 82% chance of us coming out on top of that trade. And if we wanna really be confident that our strike never gets hit, then we can sell it at 197.50, $2 above all time highs, and we'll still get paid 26 bucks. So let's say you've sold your call and collected the premium. Well, what happens next? Let's run through an example. Let's say we were on our cubes chain and we took advantage of the first opportunity that we looked at. The stock was trading for 192.52 and we sold a weekly call with a strike price of 193. The expiration is this Friday on September 20th. And for accepting that, we got paid $93 in premium. Well, what happens on September 20th? To avoid using the word options, I'll say there are four possibilities. The first possibility is that the cubes stays below 193. In that case, we would keep the premium and we would keep the shares. Remember that we're only obligated to sell our shares at the strike if the buyer wants to. And if the cubes is trading below 193, he doesn't want to buy them from us at that price when he can buy them cheaper on the open market. 
The second possibility is that the cubes rises above 193. In that case, we would keep the premium, but we would have to sell our shares. Remember, we are obligating ourselves to sell at the strike if the buyer wants to, and he will take advantage of that if the cubes is trading for a higher price than the strike. The third possibility is that the cubes rose well above 193 and the buyer of that contract exercised early. In that case, you would be forced to sell the shares at 193, but you would still keep the premium. And of course, the final possibility is that you already bought a call to close that position. You may have chosen to do that after a massive gain or a massive loss. Let's take a closer look at option two because this brings up a legitimate concern. What if I'm forced to sell the shares, but I don't have any shares to sell? Well, in that case, you would be on the hook to buy 100 shares at the market price and then sell them at the strike price, in this case 193, to the buyer. That presents a very obvious problem because you might be forced to buy these shares on the market for $200 each and then sell them for 193 each. That could result in a $700 plus loss. So what can we do to reduce that risk? Well, here's where the Theta Gang strategy of selling covered calls comes into place. What we just looked at is called selling naked calls. It's when you sell a call option without owning the underlying stock. You're always on the hook to buy the stock at the market price before you sell it at the strike. So the loss potential is infinite. Then your gains are capped only to the premium. And because of that, I think that this is a poor strategy. Instead, let's look at covered call strategies. Selling a covered call means that you're selling a call against a stock when you already own it. That way, if the stock price does rise up above your strike and you're forced to sell, you don't have to go out onto the open market and buy 100 shares. You already own those shares. That way, you're giving away something you already own and you still keep the premium. This way, it limits your loss. However, this also means that your gains are capped. If you just owned 100 shares, you'd root for the stock to go through the moon. However, in this case, since you're taking an agreement to sell at the strike price, if the stock price goes up above that strike, you're forced to sell and you can't take any further benefit, which means that your gains are capped using this strategy. However, when the market is flat and it doesn't go past your strike, you keep the premium and you keep your shares, which is what makes this Theta Gang strategy really special. When you think about what the best possibility is when you sell covered calls, it's that the stock price rises to just below your strike price. That way you can take full advantage of the market price rising but you don't have to sell your shares and you still keep the premium, which means you win on both ends. So let's recap how to put the covered call strategy into practice. Step one, you buy 100 shares of a stock. It doesn't have to be an expensive stock. Make sure it's optionable. Step two, sell a call and collect the premium. Make sure that you set a strike that is at least the same as your purchase price. That way you don't have to sell at a lower price than you bought for and risk suffering a loss. And finally, step three, you want to root for your stock to close just below the strike. That way you get to keep the shares because they're not going to get called away from you and you get to keep the entire premium. That is the best possible outcome when you sell covered calls. In this video, we covered the most basic Theta Gang strategy, which is the covered call. And I hope this video has shown you how much value there actually is in these Theta based strategies. In the next video, we're going to cover the other basic strategy, which is cash covered puts. And then from there, we'll move on to more advanced strategies, which include spreads like the iron condor. And finally, just about everybody at Wall Street Pets has a whole lot to learn. So I definitely encourage all of you to come hang out with Theta Gang, check out the website. And if you're into podcasts, check out what Junie has to say. Thanks everyone for tuning into this video. I hope to see you in the next one where we discuss cash covered puts.